Hello there again, my fellow learners. Thanks for joining me on this commentary about the conclusion of George Orwell's 1984. Now this has been a long stretch and the last few chapters have dealt with just sort of the agony that Winston has gone through here as the party and O'Brien especially have, have captured him and have worked at uh, surprisingly not executing him, although that prospect has been hinted at, but uh, exercising their total control over him by rewiring, reprogramming his thinking, and then reintegrating him back into the society, perhaps as a uh, sign to others that their power is absolute. And I want to point out this, this phrase from early in the last chapter there, this repetition of Big Brother is watching you, just one of, first of many indications that uh, the, the party is still strong. The, the anti-hero, you know, is, is a character who, who lacks the traits of a hero, who, who really fails to develop any traits during the course and the trials of the story, as, as he or she, he in this case Winston, nonetheless finds himself in a position to contend, contend against the powers that be, the party in this case, Big Brother. Well, Big Brother is still watching. He considers what he's gone through here, and uh, from the telescreen there comes this report about the, the status of the war. Now, Winston, as uh, one who worked in the revisionist office, should realize that these reports are probably all fabricated by the party. It doesn't really matter what the truth is. In fact, he's read from the book by O'Brien that uh, it, it really kind of changes the war uh, at, at any moment. And who knows what the reality is, but the party sets what the reality. But the nature of his questions here, um, and, and why hadn't it been possible to outflank them in some way, as if this were an actual report of the actual war going on, Maybe it's a suggestion of how effective his, his reprogramming at the hands of O'Brien and the party actually has been. You notice further evidence here. He recalls a conversation with Julia. They can't get inside of you. And, and an early comment from from page 31, I believe, in the story, that the only thing that was really yours was the, 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 the centimeters inside of your head, that small space. That was the only part you could keep from the party. Well, is that true? Some of that had come down to the sense of his oath to Julia about not betraying her, that he would remain loyal. That part he would hold on to. She as well swore that loyalty, and you can see, as you remember, what they said immediately to each other about that oath. Sometimes they threaten you with something, something you can't stand up to. If you read closely, you know what that was for Winston. More proof here. Now, interestingly, the two sort of resent each other as a reminder of their weakness, and yet they still... They, they still find themselves needing to meet because they share this experience with one another. She continues, at the time when it happens, you do mean it. You could just say it. And that this is this betrayal of one another. So again, I ask the question, was the party genuinely successful in changing how Winston thinks and feels? Did, did, did he just say it? Or did he truly mean it as he was declaring his uh, betrayal of, of Julia, that he, di he didn't love her, that it didn't happen. Uh, small little subtle detail, yet important. Notice that the, the, the music changes here at this very moment, and this, this tune that played outside of the, the apartment where Winston and Julia would have their rendezvous starts playing. I wonder, is Big Brother listening and watching now? We go then to the very ending here, and, and as Winston agonizes over all he's been through, he comes to this realization, this moment of, of understanding, this epiphany, as he gazes upon the enormous face, the picture of Big Brother, and the 40 years that it had taken him to learn. And as you read through, an ending that angers many people. 
But again, maybe it's evidence that we don't like, evidence that according to some in this worldview, Orwell perhaps warning us that the individual maybe has lost power, is, is too weak to contend against the establishment, against the system. Well, certainly that's a question worth considering, a, a bleak outlook in this story. But thanks for joining me as we think further about 1984.